Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's me. It's me. It's the GOC. You see, we're in the kids' playroom. The kittens, anyway. I call them the kids. Here on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel, in the lounge for another episodic YouTube adventure of Chaos Corner. We're doing another live to tape watch along. We just came out of the unbelievable event, I'll call it an event, of the 600 pound bench press competition between Animal and Hawk, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors with Paul Ellering, with number one Paul Jones on the other side, along with Uncle Ivan Koloff, Warlord and Barbarian, and the Greensboro Coliseum where they were dubbed for the very first time in February of 1988, the Powers of Pain, in the aftermath of that event. And then we even watched a little bit of Jim Cornette match, uh, I think with the redneck Dick Murdoch after that. Anyway, it was an excellent watch. It was history. That's why I bring it to you guys. So you're better off when you walk out of here than when you walked in. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog for you, the fans, here in the lounge. We still have things under construction, so we got to be mobile. Look at the playlist. I've done uh, videos and podcasts and live-to-tape watch-alongs and history reviews and covering the current product of WWE and AEW on this channel and the 4,000 videos from all different parts, from the bunker to the executive offices to the cigar lounge billiard room to the lounge down here. Even, to, as I said, as the bunker's under construction. So if you see the kids, Eli and Emily, running around, don't be distracted, man. They're here for us. They're here for you. Thanks, Austin Nance and the OTS Tribal Queen for being here. Let me know what you guys think. You know how to get in touch with me of being up here in the lounge and these getting back to these live-to-tape watch-alongs. I want to know what you think. Send me in something that you want me to review or watch, and we'll do it together. I'm open for suggestions, man. So sit back and relax. We're going to go to 1990. February of 1990, to be exact, for the NWA Power Hour. And it's going to be the Road Warriors against Doom. Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. The Road Warriors against Doom from 1990. Let's kick back and relax. I'm going to try to see what's going on with the volume, see what's happening here. You know YouTube's got their foot on my throat, man. I'd like to get down there to Silicon Valley and get somebody's ass. Well, what would I say, man? K-Fabe, it's a work, man. They not a... And thank you once again, and I'll continue to say it, to my over 2,000 subscribers, my members, and of course, the over 36,000 of you that tuned in last week. And the week before, it was 25,000. So the channel's picking up steam. We're in the fall. We're going to change the clocks back. Election Day's coming up. The world's spinning crazy. No one knows what's going to happen. Get out there and vote. So just to be here for a temporary distraction, stress reliever, plus I love it. And if you don't like the channel, here's an easy option. You can fucking change it. <laughs> what I say, man, I give it the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's what I do. I tell it like it is, man. Oh, there's Emily. There's Eli. Come on. What are you guys doing? Hop on camera. The fans want to see you here, uh, here at Chaos Corner. Let me take a sip of coffee. We're only four or five minutes in, and then we're getting on to it. You'll hear Ross, uh, Shivani, Crockett. We're doing some NWA stuff right now. Legendary uh, time frame, tag team stuff that you take out your notebook and write it down because this is history. I'm a researcher, a content creator. That's what I do. That's what it's all about. And of course, you know... My over 50 years of being in this industry, this business, like all of you, as a fan, a historian, a researcher, an agent, a producer, a talent, a smark, a mark. That's right. I said it. A mark. And I'm damn proud to say it. Over 30 years as a pro wrestling manager, 25 or 30 Hall of Famers. A hundred matches a year, maybe, perhaps, coming out two and three times. So double that up. It took the fucking bumps, too, and I like to say that. I'm proud to say that. How many of you could say that that sit in this IWC, watch other podcasters, or maybe have one yourself? 
Well, all right, lighten up. We're, we're, we're in the lounge. I'm getting crazy because Eli and Emily, I wish I had the camera over there on, uh, rolling around like it's the Royal Rumble or Hell in a Cell. I give maybe the strength and agility to Eli, but definitely the size and the uh, stamina to Emily. They're not even a year old and they're both 10 pounds plus. Uh, Eli's probably nine or 10 pounds and lean, lean and muscular. He's going in for the chokehold. She's using the ground technique, a little Taekwondo, a little kick to the gym by Emily. Eli's trying to get her down on the canvas. There they are rolling around. He's doing a gator roll. Eli going for the pin. One. Emily kicks up at one. Well, that's what you get here. Let's get on to the match. Navigate this channel. 4,000 videos. Thank you, guys. I, I, this is what I do. That's why you're here. You never know what I'm going to show, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, or what's going to happen. Much love and respect to you guys that are here. And the 85% of you that are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's free. And you get this. No matter what you think of me personally or the content, where else do you get this kind of entertainment? Where? In this crazy world of reality TV and podcasts? Because this isn't a fucking podcast. It's a show. Spread the word. Put this on your social media. Share it out there, man. I don't get a nickel from this yet. Nothing. Thank God for my members. Become a member. Again, not needed. Much appreciated. Either way, this is free. And no, again, I've said it in every video. I'll repeat it. I don't need music or sound intros or green screens or all technics and, you know, the top of the line. I love those people that do it. That's why they're pros. I give you reality here and a big fucking dose of it. Let's see, let's see what we got here. I'm in, I'm in the lounge. You guys should be lounging. Lounge with me. I got to adjust things. You know, there's always technical difficulties. Like to slap the shit out of the sound man and the cameraman. Oh, big shout out to the Paradise Four, my boys down at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. And the big thing that's going on with the WWE sending out contracts now to certain schools to have a WWE brand or affiliation with it. Who knows what that's going to do to the independent scene. I don't think it'll ever kill it. Independents right now are like the territory days. There's so many of them. A lot of quality. Some garbage and outlaw for sure. Scumbags. Yeah, I said it. But let's see what happens. A guy I traveled with and were a lot, on a lot of the same events. And I even think we were in the ring together against some of my guys. Mike Hollow, who was in the WWE, is, is here in the Greater New England Tri-State Northeast area. And his school got branded uh, affiliation with the WWE, this new project with the independents, along with uh, Dustin Rhodes Academy, along with uh, uh, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling, along with uh, uh, Tyler Black, a.k.a. Seth Rollins' school. Like I said, Mike Hollow School. I believe Mike's in Massachusetts. I don't believe he's in, in Vermont or Maine. He's in Massachusetts. Mike was a, a, a mid-card guy in excellent shape, but what a trainer and what a facility. And he's going on to train some some legends in this business. So Mike Hollow School. Uh, school. I don't, don't know if they're going to pick up the Team 3D Academy. There's two of them, one of them right here in, in the state, right down the road here. Uh, you know, Devon's down in Florida. I know that they signed up Knox Pro, which is Rikishi School out in California. You know my history with the Samoan Dynasty. I consider myself an honorary oos and couldn't thank them enough. Big part of why I have accomplished some of the things in, in, in this business for them allowing me and giving me the rub and putting me over to work with them and with others as well. So I'm pretty proud of that. Those schools have been affiliated. Again, I'm sure Team 3D is right around the corner. We're wondering if Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling has a shot if there's a second or third round. Or even House of Glory in New York. Beyond, which is right here in this area too, Beyond Wrestling. I'm not sure about Northeast. They had, they were before, uh, without it being said. Let's see what happens. That's all groups in this area. 
uh, with Roma's connection, Mancini's connection, being in the WWE for years like they were, good, bad, or indifferent, no matter the relationship, uh, think people have moved forward. Uh, uh, in this business, you never say never. We've already had WWE scout, former owner of Evolve Pro Wrestling, who was under contract with the WWE when they went to the independence during the pandemic era. Uh, worked for Ring of Honor, one of the founding fathers, and that would be Gabe Sapolsky, who is a big scout right now for the last couple of years for the WWE. He's been fired, rehired, and he's a great guy. What a uh, what a mind uh, for scouting talent. He's been down to the PAPW Academy training facility twice so far in the last two years. A couple of guys have gone on to appear on SmackDown and Raw behind the scenes as security and you know the background extras and getting work and being able to get down to the performance center roma trained mancini brain that's what you get keep an eye on these names you already know who richard holiday was who was a part of the dynasty in mlw with mjf and hammerstone richard holiday still out there what, what is holiday now like 30 years old recovered from leukemia leukemia his battle with cancer Bigger, stronger, and better than ever. And what he's doing right now, uh, him and Hammerstone uh, traveling this country in the independence, look for them soon. So keep an eye on Holiday. He was already the IWA a heavyweight champion, MLW champion. He defeated uh, Savio Vega for that IWA belt. Breathe it in because it's rarefied air. You know the story there. Chris Jericho tried to trademark rarefied air in the learning tree and all that when this first learning tree shit just started. Hi, guys. But he couldn't because he was slapped an injunction by Holiday Mancini and our kind who are in the know and know what's right and what's fair. Richard Holiday already had branded and used first rarefied air because it goes with Holiday. Breathe it in. One for the little guys over the big guy. How about that that you wouldn't learn anywhere else except here? Keep an eye on the names of Dustin Flash Waller, Kylon King, a.k.a. the Miracle Generation. Keep an eye on gorgeous Greg Baylor, a.k.a. beautiful Brad Baylor. Keep an eye on Swish Jermaine Marbury. Keep an eye on The Haven, Jay Knight, Sean Onyx. Wait, Jay Onyx and Sean Knight. Ah, I'm confused as a baby at Hooters. I have amnesia and deja vu at the same time. I think I've forgotten this before, so keep an eye on those guys. And there's many more. The Duke boys are on the horizon. Aaron Stevens, Jeremy LaCroix. The monster known as Z, Mr. Z. Sylvan, the veterans like Chris Battle. The New England Beast, Bull Dread. The Pyramids of Power. And Bomba, the Boricua brothers. Always around with that despicable human being, Zafar al-Rahihi. Remember what's going on at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. So we'll see if they uh, get in touch with the former Power and Glory member, Four Horsemen, pretty wonderful, Young Stallions. Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania, Power and Glory podcast, Hey Roma podcast, that's right, Pretty Paul Roma, our head trainer and booker at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, so we'll see what happens, if not, we're continuing to roll anyway, we run in our own legendary territory, which was the home in the shadows of Titan Towers, the WWE, you guys know that, and we're going to run uh, monthly around this area, have for the last decade and probably for the next decade. And don't forget, Mario Mancini, the owner, was in the WWF as one of the top jobbers of all time. And yeah, that's something to be said. From 84 to 92, The Undertaker's debut in the WWF, along with many other legends, the youngest at the time to be in the World Wrestling Federation. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. During the golden era, and then second generation grappler, one of our co-trainers, his cousin was Roberto Soto in the WWF. Is is his cousin? Not in the WWF anymore, though. You get it, man. 
His parents, both his mother and father, were luchadors. And he got his pro wrestling training in the basement of his house as a kid and made it all the way to New York, 88, 89, 90. Mr. Paul Perez. Can't say much more than that. That's what Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling is all about. And hopefully they can get that ID program or developmental. I mean, who knows what it's going to do to the independents. I don't think it'll kill it. Just giving you my opinion because it's something that just, just happened in the last 24 hours. So I'm bringing it to here. And then we'll get on to the about a 15-minute match between the, the Road Warriors and Doom. <clears throat> Let me have a little more. Got honey in there. The weather's changing rapidly. And that's more for Halloween. It's supposed to be like about 80 degrees here in the Northeast. I live in a crazy part of the country. I'd rather be down south or out in the Midwest. Maybe, maybe up north, but holy cromoly, is it a rat race. When they said that, and you're in the, the area from Washington, D.C. to Virginia to New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, uh, maybe not so much, New York City, New York State. Uh, then you go into the New England area, uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island and Massachusetts and New Hampshire and Vermont and, again, Buffalo, Albany, you know, upstate New York, Syracuse. You know, oh, it's great up there. It's country. This, that. The, the winters are brutal. The prices are brutal. Yeah, it is, it's quaint and it's a lot of, but you know, a lot of the elitists think they can live here. If you're middle class and you live here and it's not really a middle class, it's it's tough. Take it from someone who's been here his whole life. That's why I consider myself to be blessed. I got off on a tangent here. Just wanna, <laughs> that's what I do, though. Let's let's get on. Let's get on to the action. So let's hope that we get that identification as well. Let's see what happens in the independent scene. Our guys are out there already. Going crazy, circling around, working everywhere. Because the one thing different, out of all the schools that were mentioned, from Booker T's to Mike Hollow uh, Elite Academy in New Hampshire, I believe. Uh, again, uh, Mike and I go back 30 years, 35 years. Whether it be uh, uh, out in Iowa with uh, Seth Rollins in school, and uh, the Nightmare Factory, uh, whether it be with... Uh, uh, Cody uh, is, isn't down there, but Dustin and uh, QT Marshall. And there's, like, there might be one school that I'm missing, even if they end up bringing in Team 3D or even the, the Samoan school out in Cal California, Knox Pro. With the exception of reality of wrestling, this is the one thing that Paradise Alley has that's different. Those are academies. Those are training facilities. It's like being at the Performance Center. That's what you compare it to. But in reality of wrestling, Booker T, who's appeared for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling because of the bond between Roma and and Booker T. Paradise Alley not only is a training institution, academy, somewhere to go, a performance center, training facility, whatever you want to, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, we also run shows. We have studio shows, in-house shows, and bigger events where we go on to be YouTube or Facebook Live or iPay-Per-View uh, coming up on almost a half dozen times, three or four times. Remember that. We have local cable access and, and people around here that are so into what we do and what this whole area do, does in the New England area. It's a hotbed. The greater tri-state New England Northeast area is a hotbed of the best independent pro wrestling across this country, hands down. Better than Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, California, whatever independent scene that you're in, you can't compete with this area. So there's a lot of opportunity to do talk shows, cable access, train. A little pricey, I get it, but you get what you pay for as far as the, the living and cost expenses and being able to, you know, you have the four seasons, which is great. But Paradise Alley also throws its own shows. We have studio tapings. We have scouts coming to uh, our facility. You get WWE trainers or veterans on the indies that are there to train you every single week. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Saturday, private sessions. Does it get any better than that? And then we throw big events, whether it be raising money for autism, kids with cancer. That's what we do. Camp Rising Sun, teams that need sports equipment, local food banks. 
animal shelters, all under one roof. It's a family at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. So WWE, think long and hard about it. Think long and hard. That's a place. And again, it, oh, there's heat. Didn't Roma uh, 15 years ago trash Triple H? Uh, wasn't Mancini uh, a part of the Reader Chatterton case? If it, well, Vince McMahon, Vince is long gone. Roma and Hunter are boys. They're, uh, that's during the shoot era of TV uh, uh, interviews and podcast interviews. That shit's long gone, man. Never say never. I already said it. So let's keep that in mind. Let's give a little uh, thought and prayer on that for maybe PAPW somewhere down the road will be a part of the uh, independent identification program along with the NIL and what the WWE is doing what was just announced. Hot off the press is breaking news here. That's how you know we're live to tape. Road Warriors, Doom. Can we finally fucking get to it now? I apologize for the cussing, man. Gotta take the good, bad, and ugly. Here we go. Let's see what happens. We don't want to get any copyrights or algorithms here, fans. We know that. It's the Road Warriors and Doom. Butch Reed and Ron Simmons had a chance to meet all four and pick their brain and speak to them personally. What an honor. Reed and Simmons were incredible. Butch Reed never got to the heights that I thought he would get to. They're both given the double bicep. And again, a lot of people like to break it down by culture and race and creed. Pro wrestling wasn't like that for the longest time, no matter what you think of the crazy storylines. But if you do want to break it down as the black tag teams, I mean, there were many back in the day that were solid, but Harlem Heat, Booker T and Stevie Ray, and Doom, Ron Simmons and Butch Reed are right there on the top of all-time black tag teams. Obviously, Tony Atlas, obviously with Rocky Johnson, and there's many other teams that we could talk about. But those are the ones that right off the hopper jump right at you. And we'll see what happens. And again, this was classic. I was around to meet all four of these guys. Again, I talked about it earlier in 88, 89 when I was doing the free, uh, um, doing the last matchup of, of the Road Warriors and the Powers of Pain in the Bench Press Contest. Go check it out. You're not going to want to miss that. This is what I give you. You never know what entertainment, what's going to happen, what I'm going to talk about. Sometimes I present nothing. Go to the channel. Go to YouTube. If you have your own tape, like I do, let's line it up. They're in the ring. And this is going to be unbelievable. Two of the best tag teams ever. Doing very underrated. Ron Simmons went on to be the first black heavyweight champion in WCW and NWA. They were tag team champions, Doom. This is for the historics of it. You people want to cry racism. And the, your race card has declined here. So just to give you the heads up, all right? Animal and Hawk are in the ring. All four men, obviously, Jack. Thanks for being here, guys. I can't thank you enough for being here. And uh, hopefully it's providing you a distraction. Do I look comfortable in the lounge? My wife was watching yesterday's shows about the Freebirds. You know that we're getting into that trilogy of the fabulous Freebirds and the Von Erichs in the early 80s and WCW and what started it and how it went. And the Freebirds and Von Erichs were, were brochachos in early 82. They were faces before it went haywire. Let's, let's focus. Focus, Kate. Animal. Ron Simmons, start off this matchup. Simmons, take it over on Animal. Reversal, step down, step over, drop over, leapfrog, monkey flip, nice basics, big shoulder block by Animal on Simmons, down goes Simmons, he's in the wrong part of town, bang, and he catches the right to the gym from Road Warrior Hawk, four men, that big men and further size could move, man could they move, they were agile, mobile, hostile, and nimble, and here comes Hawk and Butch Reed. When pro wrestlers were, in my mind, pro wrestlers looked apart. I'm not talking about uh, enhancements, steroids, and whatever they did to themselves. That's on them. It wasn't illegal. Who am I to be the, the judgment moral police? I go by my own. If they do a little pose down, but these guys, the agility they had, the stamina for men that were 270, 80 pounds, 300 pounds, in an animal's case, 310 
Gordon Soley and Shivani on the commentary. Let's listen to Gordon a little bit. Side headlock by Hawk, and, and he won't let go on, on uh, Butch Reed. Nick Patrick, the third man in the ring. I love tag team wrestling. It was such a huge part of this industry and this business, especially in the 80s. Perhaps the best tag team era of all time. Let me know what you think about tag teams and what they're not doing in 2024 in the WWE, AEW, and so on and so forth. Man, tag team wrestling was the shit. It really was. Simmons and Hawk. A trading atomic knee drops. Big clothesline by Hawk. Reed's got to make a tag. Listen to the crowds. Jam-packed. I'm not sure where the location is. This is a, a part of their war they had back then. Unbelievable tag teams. You put together uh, whoever Dusty would team up with back in this era at this time here in 88. You had the Steiners. You had Sting and Lex Luger. You had the Four Horsemen. You had Powers of Pain, the Road Warriors, Doom, Harlem Heat. The list goes on and on and on of tag teams. The Sheep Herders. <coughs> Excuse me. My wife is trying to call me. Right now at 26 minutes in, she's on campus, she's working. As soon as she's not here at the Ponderosa. So twice she has tried to FaceTime me and call me, knowing that I'm probably taping right now. Wife, I love you, everything's okay. And as soon as I'm done with this live-to-tape watch-along, the Road Warriors and Doom, I will call you right back. I love you, Pep. I love you, wife. And this is the personal side you get to see of me here on Chaos Corner. Telling my wife I love her. <laughs> I'm going to clip this, wife, and I'm going to send it to you. I'll get right back to you. It's Animal and Ron Simmons right now. I, as Ellering, we look over Ellering's shoulder. I can't call you now, wife. Nice collar and elbow. Animal and Butch Reed. Got him against the rope. Big forearm blow. Shivers by Reed on Animal. Here it is. The body press. Animal puts Butch Reed overhead and slams him about 10, 12 feet to the canvas. Holy but Jesus. And it's not Nick Patrick there that's the referee. I don't know who it is. Wow! Bang, boom, up goes a 275-pound Butch Reed. Bonk! Now that's a bump. That's what uh, a lot of people don't understand. The physicality. You see the, the gymnastics flip, flam, uh, flop, and dive. Animal brings in the hard way, brings in Butch Reed over the top rope. A big difference compared to back in this day. Hawk off the top rope. Quick tags. Keeping Butch Reed in their side. Road Warriors, this is why they were their best. You will wrestle their match. You will do their style. You'll have no choice. They'll take your fucking head off. Holding on to the arm bar, a Road Warrior Hawk has Butch Reed on the canvas. Listen to the fans. Listen. Let me know about the volume. I always worry about the volume compared to my volume. Because you know I'm loud. Anybody taking a bet on whether a wife calls back for a third time or no? Make a little side bet out there in the chat if the wife will try to call back a third time while we're doing this watch along. Come on, throw a little something on it, man. And whoever gets the right amount of over and under, it's at two right now. Let's see if we get three. I'll send you an 8x10 autographed Hall of Fame photo. Beautiful hip toss by Hawk. And yes, the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Big body slam by Hawk. Class of 2019 along with a lot of legends. Two count. Reed kicks up. Hawk's all over him. Hawk was in tremendous physical shape. Cardio, unbelievable. Double team back elbow by the Road Warriors. The Legion of Doom, if you will. Listen to Gordon Soley. I could listen to Gordon Soley all day. Announce matches. Very, very well. He's very 
Animal right now has the arm lock. They made the tag. Animal is in on Butch Reed. Made the arm lock into an arm ringer, a wrist lock. There's the third call by the wife. The third call by the wife. So if anybody in there said, yeah, she'll call back again, email me, inbox me. You guys know the address. Let me know. I'll post it, and I'll get you that 8 by 10 autograph. If anybody said three, can we go for four? We're 30 minutes in here on the tape. She's going to laugh her ass off because she goes back and she watches and she reviews. She puts up with this. Animal's been slammed into the side of the ring post. Into the guardrails, metal guardrails back here in 1990. Ron Simmons, Butch Reed, taking Animal to task outside. There's the fourth time she's called. Four times. <laughs> Should I get off or should I continue with this? I know she's, it's her lunchtime. It's lunchtime. She's calling me on lunch to see how I am. Am I going to have to stop this review between the Road Warriors and Simmons and Reed? Should I? Is it the right thing to do? Somebody say something in the chat. Animal dropped across the top rope. All right, fans, don't go anywhere. This is See, you never know how it's going to end here. i got to tend to the wife. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'm not sure if we'll pick off and pick up back here with the animal and the hawk against Doom or if we're going to hop onto something else. Just know there's more content for you. I'll say that to say this. I better call the wife.